Welcome to a new video guide about the Grandstream GWN7800 series switches. In this episode, we will cover identity authentication. This feature is a network security mechanism that can be implemented to prevent unauthorized devices from accessing the network. It is a port-based authentication method where devices are authenticated before they are granted access to the network. In this video guide, we will use this network configuration example to demonstrate how to configure identity authentication on a GWN switch. We will cover four ways of implementing identity authentication. A RADIUS authentication server will be required for .1x authentication methods. When .1x port-based authentication is enabled, the switch prompts the device for authentication and begins relaying authentication messages between the device and the RADIUS authentication server. All identity credentials are entered and stored in the server. It is worth mentioning that this method works only with devices that are 802.1x compliant. The switch can also be configured to grant network access based on the device MAC address. With MAC-based authentication, the switch uses the connected device MAC address as the client identity and relays it to the RADIUS authentication server. The server should already have a list of MAC addresses that are allowed network access. In a situation where a RADIUS authentication server is not available, the list of authorized MAC addresses can be entered and stored locally on the switch. Using this method, the switch will become the authenticator. In addition to implementing one authentication mode per port, the GWN switch supports configuring multiple authentication modes on a single interface. This is suitable for a situation where you have two or more devices connected to the same switch port and each device is authenticating with a different method. When only one device is allowed on a switch port, single user mode can be implemented. This method essentially restricts network access on a specific port to just one device. In this video, we will cover 802.1x authentication method. We will implement .1x to authenticate identity credentials and MAC addresses. Part 2 and 3 of this video guide will demonstrate how to use other methods and explain the advanced parameters associated with identity authentication. We will use the web interface of the GWN switch to implement our configuration. Assuming you have a RADIUS authentication server configured and running, you need to ensure that the server is configured to accept requests from the IP address of the switch. Go to the RADIUS configuration page under Security menu. Click Add and enter the information regarding your RADIUS server such as the IP address, UDP port, and shared key. In case multiple RADIUS servers will be used for redundancy, add an entry for each server, and define the priority option to decide which RADIUS server to use first. The switch will always try the RADIUS server with the lowest priority value first. Followed by the RADIUS server with the next lowest priority value, if the first RADIUS server cannot be reached. The lower the value, the higher the priority. Enter the value 0 to give this server the highest priority. Click OK to apply the changes. After you have the RADIUS authentication server information configured on the switch, go to Identity Authentication. To configure .1x port-based configuration, toggle this option and apply the change. Next, select and edit the ports that will have .1x port-based authentication. Set user authentication mode to port-based. Set authentication type to .1x. Set method to radius. There is the option to add other types of authentication that the switch can try to validate the identity of the connected devices. In this example, configure only one type of authentication to force the selected switch ports to strictly use .1x. Then, apply the change. Next, you need to define port control state under the port tab. Select and edit the ports that have .1x enabled. There are four states available. For this configuration example, set port control to auto. With auto state, the port starts in the unauthorized state where all traffic is blocked except for .1x authentication, spanning tree, and LLDP traffic. When a device is plugged into a port, the switch requests the identity credentials and begins relaying the authentication messages between the device and the RADIUS authentication server. When the device is successfully authenticated, the port changes to the authorized state and the device is granted access to the network. If the device fails to authenticate, the port remains in the unauthorized state, and the client is not granted access to the network.
To explain the other states, Force Authentication disables 802.1x authentication and puts the port in the authorized state without requesting authentication from connected devices. With this state enabled, connected devices will be granted network access without authentication. Force Unauthentication causes the port to remain in the unauthorized state. Essentially, this state blocks access to the network and the switch port will not accept authentication. Disabled state means .1x authentication is turned off, and the port is automatically placed in the authorized state when a device is connected. It basically allows access to the network without requiring authentication. As a reminder, this method works only with devices that are .1x compliant. To demonstrate how to connect an 802.1x client, we will use the Grandstream IP phone GRP2616. Currently, this phone is connected to a port with .1x authentication disabled. To configure the client identity credentials, go to Network Settings, Ethernet Settings, and scroll down to .1x. Set the mode to EAP method that uses the MD5 hash. This matches the method enabled on the RADIUS server used in this configuration example. Next, enter the identity and the associated password. All identity credentials are entered and stored in the RADIUS authentication server. For successful authentication, the identity credentials configured on the phone must be included in the server database. You can check the list of users in the RADIUS database to confirm the validity of the identity credentials used by the IP phone. Now we can take this phone and plug it into one of the .1x enabled ports. You can confirm if the phone has been successfully authenticated by going to the Authentication Sessions tab. Authorized under the status column indicates the device has been granted access to the network. For devices that do not support identity credentials, you can use .1x Mac-based authentication method. Each device attempting to connect to the network is identified and authenticated using the device MAC address. Essentially, the switch will use the device MAC address as the client identity and relay that information to the RADIUS authentication server. The device is granted network access if the MAC address is included in the server database of authorized MAC addresses. Once enabled, you need to define the MAC-based format. The format defined here must match the one used by the RADIUS Authentication Server. This shows that the server is using this format in the database of MAC addresses. Ensure you apply the matching format on the switch. Save the change. Next, select and edit the ports that will have MAC-based authentication enabled. Set the authentication mode to MAC-based. For authentication type, select MAC Authentication and set the method to RADIUS. Now, if we connect the device with this MAC address on the server, it should be granted access to the network. You can go to the Authentication Sessions page to confirm if the device was successfully authenticated and authorized access to the network. This concludes today's video about implementing 802.1x authentication using identity credentials and MAC addresses. In part 2 of this episode, we will explain and demonstrate how to implement multi-mode authentication on a single interface and how to restrict network access on a specific port to just one device.